Hey everyone, it's Moise here from Remax Impact Realty. You can call me Mo if it's easier. I actively sell real estate across the Durham region and GTA as a full-time sales representative. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you my top three market forecast visions. And stay till the end to see if I feel, or my team or everyone that I work with feel that there will be a market crash coming. So let's dive into the numbers first and foremost. Now bear with me, I have multiple screens going on here. I have a lot written down that I wanna share with you. So my eyes will wander a little bit. Last year, it was reported that across the Toronto board, there were 126,076 home sales. That is a lot of homes that sold. And the average home across the Treb region, the Toronto board appreciated by 30% give and take. To put that in perspective, if you purchased a home for $800,000 last year, depending on the time you purchased that home, it is now worth a million 40,000 give and take. Now let's chat what we forecast to happen this year in terms of average appreciation and number of units sold. This year, we forecast that there will be 100,000 units sold, give and take. And we anticipate having a really active market, but we do not forecast more than 15% home appreciation. So if you purchase that same home this year for $1 million, with the 15% appreciation expected, your home will be worth one million one hundred and fifty thousand dollars by the end of the year and there's one thing i want to chat with you guys about right now um these numbers right here this and this the sales that we had last year and the sales that we are forecasting this year this is a difference of roughly twenty six thousand homes fewer that are expected to sell and that may sound like a massive number however at a hundred thousand homes sold it doesn't have that big of an impact to paint a picture to give you a different perspective pre-covid we were selling seventy thousand homes in what was considered to be a relatively balanced real estate market for us to have a hundred thousand homes sold, you need everything to be perfect. The interest rate has to be attractive and there has to be a lot of homes available for sale and there needs to be a very active spring and fall market. So while we anticipate a lot of competition out there, at the same time, we do also anticipate a lot of homes for sale to get to this number of overall sales by the end of the year. Next thing I want to chat with you about is seller's market. So we are off to a very low inventory market at this time. There's very few homes listed for sale. And this happens every single year, truthfully. And this is why when the winter months come around, holidays come around. Naturally, more individuals that own homes are spending time with family, holiday festivities, rather than putting their house on the market. In fact, putting their house on the market is an inconvenience because rather than being in their own home celebrating, they have strangers coming in to view their home to potentially purchase it. This happens every year. Year. However, every year, home buyers also do the exact same thing. They take time away from the real estate market and they spend, they do their holiday festivities and they're not actively looking for sales. So while inventory goes down, buyer demand also goes down. But this year and last year as well, actually, but this year, the buyer demand never went down. Inventory did, buyer demand didn't. And the reason for that is the low interest rate. People are trying to get in the housing market as soon as possible. That is why the average home is getting five to 15 offers on one single property at a minimum. And some homes are getting even more, right? So the seller's market that we had last year was a crazy seller's market. And to paint a picture on a scale of one to 10, the seller's market that we had last year was a nine out of 10 in the favor of the seller. This year, we also anticipate a seller's market, but it will not be as intense. We anticipate it being a four out of 10 in the favor of the seller. So what that means for a homeowner is that if you're putting your house on the market, you will have competition and you will not be able to get away or get the same results if you do not invest in home preparation, marketing, and correct pricing strategy. For a home buyer, what that means is that you will now find more inventory to choose from. You might still run into competition, but it won't be as as bad and you'll have more homes available for sale ultimately giving you more options inventory is expected to rise all the factors are indicating towards that however because we had a busy winter month it takes some time for the inventory to relatively meet the demand of buyers it's never going to fully meet the buyer demand then you have a balanced market we're going to have a seller's market this year because the interest rate is also expected to stay low actually you will notice that mid-feb to mid-march there will be a lot more homes for sale and if you intend to purchase with 
within those months, I recommend speaking to your mortgage broker now and strategizing your game plan now to be in a position where you can purchase mid-Feb or mid-March. So the next point I want to chat with you about is market crash and if we anticipate having one this year. So last night, CMHC released a report saying that home prices will go down by 40 to 45 percent, nearly half, which is a crazy number. For as long as I've been selling real estate, I have never seen CMHC be correct with their prediction. I have, however, seen them go viral every single year because they're sharing a type of stat which creates awareness for their company and their report. Before my time selling real estate, my mentor for many years when he sold real estate, he has also not seen CMHC ever been correct. So what I'm going to do with you is I'm going to show you three reasons why we don't anticipate a market crash happening. And I will leave it with you to then decide what is the better decision for you. We don't know evidently what's going to happen with the market crash. We never do. No one ever does. If we did, we could time the market. But we do have some stats to support why we feel that it won't happen this year. Maybe not in the near future for that matter of fact. So the first thing I want to chat with you about is interest rates. We believe that the interest rates will stay low all year. And we do understand that there might be an interest rate hike, but we don't anticipate having one this year. If there is an interest rate hike this year, it will be a very small increment, maybe 0.25%. So instead of 1.5, you will be at 1.75% interest rate. And that does affect your payments, but not to the level where people will just not buy homes because they can't afford it, ultimately leading to a market crash, right? And there has been a massive desire to purchase real estate. This year, this is one of the reasons why the cost of borrowing money is so low. Your mortgage payments would be so low. Not only that, more than 50% of your mortgage payments would then go to your principal and you're paying down your loan quicker because the interest rate is so low. Before COVID, we were at 4%. That's a massive difference. So with the rental market prices so high, consumers are prioritizing doing everything they can to get into home ownership. If your rent is $3,000, what everybody wants ideally is to pay that same $3,000, but in a mortgage. And more than 50% of this number right here is going to be going towards your principal paying down your property. When you're paying rent, it is quite literally helping your landlord pay down their property. I'm not saying rental is bad. I'm just saying that if you have the ability to qualify for a mortgage, instead of renting, unless you need to, unless it's temporary, then you most likely will be going towards the route of home ownership, ultimately increasing the demand for first-time home buyer properties. A lot of first-time home buyers are actually coming up with to create a solution and they're teaming up with their friends and parents and they're borrowing the down payment from them and the parents are able to provide them the down payment because they are taking advantage of refinancing their current property while also taking advantage of the low interest rates. Message me if that's something that you intend on doing. And the last reason why we feel that there will not be a market crash this year is the simple reason of supply and demand. So in every real estate market, there's a few types of home buyers. You have have, uh, we'll just make a short first time home buyers. You have move up buyers. You have individuals who are looking to downsize and you have individuals who are going through separation and the need to find different accommodation. And then you have investors. Because the interest rates have been so low, a lot of the transactions, the homes that are being sold are also being done by investors. What is going to change, in addition to the individuals from that are going from leasing to home ownership, we are expecting roughly 400,000 new immigrants to Ontario this coming year, right? These folks have plans provided from the bank, which aid them into getting into home ownership with a larger sum of deposit. These folks will also be looking to purchase real estate. Now, the demand is there 100%. The issue is the supply. What a lot of people don't know is that every single year, the city only approves for a certain number of homes to be completed every year per city rules, right? And that number is a fraction compared to the number of demand. These many homes are expected to be completed. This is roughly the demand. It's a very, very big gap. For a crash to happen, home ownership simply has to become unattractive. It has to become unaffordable, right? Interest rates need to touch and go beyond 4% like they were before COVID. That will affect affordability, thus leading to less people being able to afford real estate. Only people that need to move will then be moving, which will then lead to a market correction, not a crash. 
So this is why consumers are rushing to get their mortgage now. If you get a mortgage now, you lock in your interest rate and you're exempt from any interest rate hikes. So in summary, folks, that is my market forecast. I did go in detail and share as much information as I could with y'all. And I want to summarize this by saying, by telling you what this means for home buyers and home sellers. For home sellers, you will have more competition. So presentation, pricing strategy, the right representation will mean a lot more than what it meant last year. Last year, we could sell a home with just one photo, take it from our phone of the exterior of the home during nighttime. Unfortunately, if you do that this year, you will not get the best return on your investment. Home buyers, you will have more inventory available to you. You will have more homes to choose from. You will have less competition. However, there will be competition. So being prepared, getting pre-qualified, chatting with the realtor that's actually actively helping home buyers in this market and has a track record and learning their systems to help you stand out in today's market is vital. Do not fling it because this market needs a strategy to survive. We helped more than 60 families buy and sell real estate last year. More than half of that number was to represent uh, individuals who bought real estate. And we have a system in order. They took advantage of it. And each and every family that we represented was able to secure a home in that crazy seller's market that we had. So to book your home buyer consultation, you can reach out to me directly at the information listed below. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and I will catch you guys at the next video. Have an awesome night.